Welcome back, I am Sakura and I'd like to start off by saying thank you to Gloss Order and Paradox Interactive for giving me access to the DLC, Plazas and Promenades. Today, let's go find out what it's all about, shall we? Let's go. Editing Sakura here, I'm just quickly jumping in to say we're celebrating 1k, 1, not 2, 1k subscribers, which is fantastic. Thank you so much to everybody for subscribing to me and showing your support. But to celebrate that, along with the release of Plazas and Promenades, which is coming very soon, I've heard, um, we are giving away a free copy of the DLC to one of you. All you need to do is to watch all three of these videos and then like every single one, and then come back here, comment on what you're looking forward to the most in the new DLC. And while you're there, you might as well comment on all the other videos and subscribe to the channel. And then all you need to do is to pop over to Saturday's live stream to see who the winner is. If you don't show, you don't come, I'll reach out to you. Good luck to every single one of you and enjoy the new DLC when it drops. Okay, so let's get started then. So as the way I'm doing this today is a little bit different to how I normally do a video. I'm actually gonna do it with you and we're gonna have a look and we'll experience the whole DLC together and see exactly what's going on. And I'll talk through it as we do. Now I've got this random little street uh, just to bring people into the uh, actual city or this road. It's not really city, is it? But um, we're gonna go in, start by building the pedestrian area and then look at all the features and all the extras that come with it. Now, to start off with, we're gonna need to build one of the service buildings, one of the six new service buildings that all function slightly differently. Now, like I said, there are six, as you can see here. We'll start off with the small pedestrian area service point and then the large version. Then there's the small cargo service point, the large version, then the small garbage service point, and then of course, as always, a large version. Now, each one of these would function slightly differently. The garbage one, they just they do garbage, basically. They do have a select amount that they can do per week, which we'll go through a bit later on. The cargo, do a cargo. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but the service areas, um, the pedestrian area service points, deal with both, but in a smaller amount. So they're multiple use, but not as much of them, uh, which is a bit, it's pretty good actually. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use one of those uh, pedestrian service areas and we're going to start off our pedestrian area. Now there's two ways to do this. The first way is you use one of those service buildings that we just went through. You can pop them down and they will open it up for you, which I will show in a moment. Or if you wish, you can go into the districts and areas menu and draw one out. Uh, you can just draw out the space that you want and job's good. Um, however, each pedestrian area does require some service buildings to actually service them. We start getting random trucks and everything down there anyway. So I do recommend you start off with this way. Kind of think of it like a park entrance or something like that that we've used before, like the zoos and stuff. So that's how I see it. Now you can start off with by going down to the parks and plazas button down here. So go into that menu and then you're given a few different new options. The first one is the one I'm on now, which is the pedestrian area. And afterwards is the pedestrian area plazas, which we'll come on to a bit later on. Uh, and then you've got content creator back at the end, uh, which again is something we'll be coming on to later. It's a little sneak peek there of some of the extra stuff that is in there. Absolutely great. We're going to start off here with a large pedestrian area service point. I'm going to pop that down here. As you can see, that's giving me now that blue little mark or green, depending on what you see, uh, or turquoisey, um, just to start off my area. So I can then go into here and extend that out. Now that's a bit of a weird one, just like a giant circle. I'm gonna make the brush a bit smaller. We'll just kind of start off with a nice pedestrian point. There we go. Okay, now one of the really cool things about the new pedestrian areas, if you click on the name, it's a bit of a weird name I know, but it's the new menu and everything that's available in this. Now there is some 
extra bits in here that I do want to quickly go through. One is your happiness, very similar to the general city happiness. Your entertainment, again, very similar. And these are goals that you're going to be working to and they're going to improve the land value bonus that you get from your uh, pedestrian area, which is exactly what we want. We want that all completely full, making the monies. Now, after that, you've got the zone squared required for area focus. Now, this is the amount of people that come visit the area, what you've actually got put down uh, in that area. And as you can see written there, it says the minimum amount of zoned squares placed on the pedestrian streets to require this area of focus for a focus, for an area of focus. Now, they are zoned, not just placed. Uh, you can't just place it, they're physically zoned. And we'll show you that as we go. And that will help you unlock things and get things together. Then you've got the service point usage. Now I mentioned before they only have a certain amount. And as you can see there, cargo and garbage. You've got cargo trucks. You've only got 15 per week, per calendar week to use um, to deliver cargo. So you don't want them all going out at the same time. Hopefully it's very similar. Uh, it's not similar, sorry, uh, to the way industries worked. And there was trucks going with about one bit of cargo in each. Hopefully they do kind of go into this place, they load it up and they will deliver it at once. And I've had a good play and I've pretty much only seen one or two trucks come out of these buildings. So I think that is exactly what's going on. The same with the garbage, you've got 10 a week. It's not many, but they do one trip a week, 10 trucks coming out, picking up all the garbage. Very similar to home where they only pick them up once a week anyway. You've got the maintenance cost down the bottom. This is how much this area costs you to run this entire area obviously per um, week as well. The tourist count, so how many people are visiting, because it is an attraction, people do come here, people do have a look. And then you've got the size. So this is 7,356 cells, and that does go into the entertainment per cell. So how much entertainment is per each cell? 7,000 is a lot. Now we're going to policies, we've got four new policies. First one is slow driving. What it basically does is this slows down the traffic limit for the main sort of roads which are you know a normal road not a pedestrian path uh in within that area so if i basically take our pedestrian zone and i extend it across this entire road here like so if i decide to use that option i'll automatically slow this road down to 20. so it's slowing them down decreasing the noise pollution um which is actually great. Now it doesn't apply to the highway, so they'll come in nice and fast, but it is a cool little feature to have. That way no one's rushing around, especially as there are a lot of people crossing the roads uh, around pedestrian areas. So it's a bit quieter, a bit nicer, especially if you've got the pedestrian area near the seafront, that would be quite nice, I think. Now you've also got the sugar ban as well, which is a bit of a weird one, um, but I do kind of like it. And this is increases the average lifespan of your citizens, which is something that's really cool. Uh, stop, hopefully stop some death waves. Uh, but we'll see. Um, and it does this by about 20%, but it also increases the crime rate because, you know, they're smuggling candy bars. Okay, um, I love that little line at the bottom there, but it's just, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, but it's kind of cool. Then you've got street music, which increases the happiness in any commercial zone. So it's kind of like busking, uh, where they're standing outside a bit little uh, shops, playing their guitar, doing a bit of singing, or whatever they're doing, playing piano. I saw that on YouTube, it was a bit weird. Um, but, you know, they do all this stuff and that increases the happiness um, but also increases the noise pollution. I think that would work really well with the slow driving one as well. I'm going to select it because I think it looks cool. Deliver everything will allow all buildings within this area to get cargo delivered and the garbage service uh, via the service point. This is what we want. What we don't want is people to be running in and out, trucks to go all over the place. Because we've got a service point available in our pedestrian area, because we've got a service point, what we want is we want that to actually work on anything we put inside this pedestrian area. Even if it is a standard road, which will normally be covered by normal traffic. So we don't want that. We want them to always, no trucks everywhere. We want to be nice and quiet. We just want this cargo area um, and the service point to actually deliver. So we're going to click on that as well. And then of course, as always, you've got your unlocking options. Now I've already got these unlocked, but each one has something different um, as you go. So the small cargo one uh, is to have five cargo trucks per week visit your area. So when you start this area, you're only gonna start with service points anyway. And then we're gonna go more specific as we go. And we've got garbage, it's the same, but with garbage trucks. And it's only three this time. 
instead of five. Uh, the large protection area service point, again, 12, but there are several different ones as you go uh, to do different things. And then you've got your plazas as well, which are really nice. And they're all to do with that land value um, per cell throughout the entire build you have. Along with the specific unique buildings, which I'm not gonna go through in total now, because I'm gonna have a closer look at them later, along with the, uh, the plazas too. Okay, so now we've got your standard pedestrian area set up, ready to go. We're gonna start putting down some stuff in it and have a look to see what they have to offer. Now we have to start with the pedestrian roads. Now this one I'm gonna use, you don't need to, you can just use the normal road because we do have all those extra functions on. We've got the slow road, so they're gonna be moving slowly and we've got deliver everything. So no big trucks and stuff like that coming down there. Just the one from the service point. But I'm gonna use these because I love these. Now there is six different types all together. Three lots of small, three lots of large, and they come in three different varieties. You've got the sandstone, you've got the bluestone, and the cobblestone. I'm gonna go through all three of them with you now. So what we've got is we've got the sandstone, which are very nice. Then we've got the bluestone, which, you know, to be fair, doesn't really look blue, but I realize that's just the type of stone it is. Uh, and then of course, you've got the cobblestone as well. Now all of them will come in different varieties. They come in five varieties in total. You've got the normal ones, as you can see there, along with the grass down the side, grass with the trees down the side, and the one with the planters in the middle, which holds a special place in my heart. And then finally for the fifth one, you've got the one with the bus lane. Now they all come in small, and then they come in the larger roads as well. Okay, so we're gonna start off by using the sandstone bus lane. Sandstone one is my favorite, I'll be honest. Although I do like the cobblestone. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw that as we would a normal road. The first thing you'll notice is the bollards. So it cuts off completely, which is great. Sticks a set of traffic lights on and then gives you that bus lane in the middle. And only buses will travel down there. Of course, emergency vehicles as well. Now if you use one without the bus lane, so let's say we don't use the bus lane and we just use the one nice trees or stuff down the middle there there you go the planters the bollards will come across now as you can see from there they are slightly down and if i start the stimulation you can see um, those bollards are completely down and there they go and they rise as a service vehicle or a um, police vehicle or anything like that goes through there they will drop and then re-rise it it's fantastic i mean it's the best feature in this entire uh, DLC, to be honest with you, <laughs> I love it. So now we've set this up, and these good things about these pathways is they are all zonable. So you can zone them, we can put buildings on the side of them. Yes, vehicles can't get to them because of the way we set this up, but you can still put anything around there you wish. Now, the cool thing about this area is you're going to kind of want to use the new features, I think, um, just to make it look absolutely amazing. Now you could use the new content creator packs, which look really good in these type of areas, or you can use the new wall to wall feature, which I think is absolutely amazing. It's definitely one of my favorites. Now the wall to wall feature allows you to have all the new buildings, which were released in this DLC. And trust me, there's a lot of them. I'll show you them in a moment. It allows you to put them down so they literally sit wall to wall. They look absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna stick a load of these down and uh, let's get started. So before these actually start coming in, what I will show you to do to use that water wall feature, you're gonna go into your districts and areas menu, and we're gonna use the standard district. Now I know I mentioned you cannot overlap any of these, which you can't, but the standard districts you can. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select this and we're gonna build in a district. It's called Maple Square. And then we're gonna go into our residential specification, specialization. I'm always getting my words wrong, but okay, that's why we come here. I'm going to click on that and then we've got the new one here, which is wall to wall. Now to use the wall to wall feature, you would select this and then just click and you'll see a little icon come up. You've got one for offices, one for residential and one for commercial. Now you must make sure you only zone the high density buildings. It doesn't work on low density. Okay, so now that's all been built, let's go, and have, go in and have a look. So this is the new wall to wall feature. As you can see, the buildings are literally wall to wall, all the way down, which is great. There's no gaps. You do get the odd gap where like here, there's a gap underneath, but that's just the style of the building. Um, and I love these buildings because there's lovely murals down the side. They're absolutely fantastic. 
They do vary between building to building. So if you've got two buildings, it's exactly the same. There's two there. They are the same building, just slight different colors, different murals. But let's say you want to extend this area a little bit because we've got other buildings we've got the plazas that we actually want to look at which are the namesake of the uh, dlc so we do want to look at them so let's extend that let's go for a small one and we're going to start here we're going to go down that little gap because it makes sense right and then we've got that extra button as mentioned earlier pedestrian area plazas we're going to go in there and we're going to have a look at all the new plazas there are 10 of them in total which is great there's six normal and then there's four go over the roads i will show you them they're really cool Okay, they look great, don't they? They're really nice. I love the ones that go over the road. And as I mentioned in my reaction video before, I did say to uh, Six Islands Paradox and Cross Order that I wanted these fountains to be animated. And if I unpause, you'll see they definitely are animated fountains. I absolutely love it. I think they look fantastic. They are really cool. It's a nice little feature uh, that they put in there for me. Well, not for me particularly, but I'm going to take credit for them. I think it's a great idea. Um, but we put a few different plazas down and they're definitely going to help with the happiness in this area. So for an info, you can see the happiness at 41% and the entertainment value is starting to come up, which is really good. And this is what we're needing to one, earn more money for the area and to unlock all those extras. Now, additional extras that you do get for this, which are fantastic, is the high capacity buildings, which are amazing. There's so many good ones. Um, and we're going to go through them all each individually and we're going to show you because we can put them down in this position area if we want to. Um, I don't know why you would, but you might want to. First one is a high capacity hospital, uh, which is an absolutely lovely building. Uh, after that, we have the high capacity fire station. And then after that, of course, we have the high capacity police station, which if you ask me, isn't really high capacity. It looks rather small but it's still a lovely building. And then we have the education as well. Now you've got the high capacity elementary school, which is a lovely building, the high capacity high school, so a lovely building. And then of course the high capacity university, which is one of my favorites. I do love it. Now, as I mentioned, when I watched the, the, the trailer for this, the school that I really liked the look of was the elementary one. I like that big open area in there. I think it looks fantastic. The detail to these buildings is amazing considering they're just going to be popped into the game uh, and they're not additional workshop stuff so all available to absolutely everyone and i'm going to show you all the individual stats of each one so you can see what differences between the original and the new high capacity because i think they're freaking great should be on your screen now
Okay, so that was the new high capacity buildings. Some really nice models there. They do look absolutely amazing. And they are all coming within this DLC. Now, along with them, and everything that you do get in any DLC, is a new set of unique buildings, which can be found by going through the unique building button down here and then over to the pedestrian area landmarks. There are six of them in total and they do require different things to unlock. Now, the first one you've got here is the marketplace. Marketplace looks absolutely fantastic. It's the one I really wanted, mainly because of the squirrel with a donut on the front, uh, but it's also completely modeled inside as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And this one does require 350 weekly tourists uh, in your pedestrian area to unlock. Once you've reached that, you'll unlock this building, be able to put it down anywhere in your city. Okay, so the next one actually requires less, and that is the museum. Uh, for some reason, it's second on the list. Now, this is the Museum of Postmodern Art. Kind of fits with the rest of the look here, with the murals down the side, and this one requires 250 weekly tourists in your pedestrian area. And once you've got that, you can pop that down anywhere in your city or within your pedestrian area. I think that'll make a really nice central landmark. It looks kind of funky. It's kind of cool. I like it. Okay, so the next one's the last one that requires weekly tourists. This one requires 500 weekly tourists in your pedestrian area, and this is the Sunken Plaza. It's like a uh, little shopping plaza, which is really cool, and looks absolutely fantastic. Um, it really does. Different levels on this one. I think this is a great idea. Um, it's very cool, very nicely modeled. I can't wait to watch people walking around on the different areas. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Okay, and then after that, you have the three specific ones and these ones are commercial residential and an office landmark which i think is really cool it's a bit new you've got the commercial zone landmark here and then you've got the residential zone landmark and then the office zone landmark which just don't function as they do they're just unique buildings um that one's not a shopping center one's not a big flat block of flats and one's not a massive office they're just unique buildings but they do look kind of cool. Now the commercial one, which I do absolutely think is, is lovely. And I specifically like this fountain thing at the end here. That's really cool. This one requires 20,000 weekly sales in the pedestrian area. So the more shops you have around here, using that wall to wall would increase and get close to that building. The next one is a residential one, which is nice. I like the mural down the side, but the building itself, not really my style, but it is very interesting The different levels. It is kind of cool. That one requires 2,000 residential residents in the pedestrian area. Again, the more of these buildings are popping down, the higher it is, because remember they are all high residential. And then you've got the office one. I do like the office one. It's a bit different. I like the fact it's got a little plaza next to it. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, and the mural is kind of fancy as well. And that one requires uh, 2,000 jobs in the pedestrian area. So again, Anything that requires work, whether it be from industry or offices, I would use the offices uh, in the pedestrian area personally. And you can do that again by using that wall to wall. Okay, so just stepping away from the pedestrian area for the moment because we've got some additional things that were given to us in this and of course we've seen the roads already and obviously that new metro track the one lane metro track that i mentioned in my previous video if you've not seen that it'll be on the screen somewhere or there'll be linked down below for you to look at now that's a really cool video and i go through all the individual roads that we get in the free version of this dlc because they're all in there not in here but you need this one and the paid version to get the buildings that come with it. And they are some really nice ones. So you go into your transport barn as you would normally. And your first one is your bus center. So you've got your new compact bus station. Pretty cool. When we go over to the metro, we've got an elevated metro station. A brand new one with shops in it. I think that's quite cool. They don't function as shops. It's just one building. It's a metro station. I haven't quite got multiple use buildings in this yet. But hopefully soon. Of course, those one-way uh, metro tracks that we mentioned before. And then you've got two actual metro stations. You've got the parallel metro station, which has just got two lines next to it. It's a standard station, if you ask me, with two tracks. And then you've got the larger underground metro, which kind of works like an interchange of metro. They go across each other. And then finally, you do have the new train station as well. 
which is pretty nice to have. Um, we always want more train stations. These fit with the theme that we've got currently going in this whole area. So even these would look kind of nice in this uh, pedestrian area. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So if we go into the metro and we go, I'm going to go with this nice big one here, which is the one that crosses. And we're going to stick it down. Let's go right there. Sorry, buildings, we're going to get rid of you. And as you can see, it fits nicely in the whole area. It doesn't stand out, kind of fits in nicely. You don't need to use that new old one that we had before. These kind of fit the area quite nice. And I think they're kind of cool. Along with all those features and those extra buildings that we've just looked at and the features within this area, there are some extra cool bits as well. There's five new maps, which I did a video about previously. Again, it'll be on the screen somewhere, probably there or there. I keep forgetting my camera's the other way around, so it's probably nearish. Um, if not, then it'll be down in the description. Uh, a little card up the top as well. It's that way, isn't it? Uh, I'll figure it out eventually. But there's a little card on the screen, so you can have a look at that as well. So there's the new maps. That's about standard with a DLC. One thing that is kind of cool, kind of extra, which I actually love, is we've got some new chirpers as well. So we're going to turn Anarchy off to be able to actually look at this for you. And then we're going to click into the chirp. Click on the little button here. Let's have a look. So we've got two new ones. We've got the one with the little chef's hat on, which is really cool. So it's a little chef's hat. It's more of a... Um, it's like a party hat. I don't know. It's a hat. They both got hats on. Uh, and then you've also got the one with the uh, nice big hat on. I love that one. I think that's the better one. Uh -huh. So we've got the two new chirpers, which I think is pretty cool. Along with a bunch of new chirps that kind of fit the actual area. Like this one here. It's on screen now. So the city's new large garbage service point is a real lifesaver. They're very specific to this area, to this DLC. They're pretty cool. I really like them. Okay, so that's everything this DLC has to offer. There's some great stuff in it, don't you think? But along with that, we've got two extra new radio stations and we've got two content creator packs. Now, I haven't got my hands on the radio stations yet, but they do sound pretty cool and I'm looking forward to hearing them because they're anything like previous ones. They're going to be absolutely amazing. And they are um, the Shoreline Radio uh, as well as Paradise Radio. I think they all sound really cool. I do look forward to them. Then we've got the two content creator packs, which I did mention there. We've got the Mid-Century Modern and the Seaside Resort. Both of them absolutely fantastic.
It looks absolutely amazing. They'll be available at the same time as DLC is available. Of course, it's coming soon. We don't know when it's coming out just yet, but hopefully it'll be very soon because I just want to get all this built into uh, my cities. I've got some new ideas, some new products I'd like to try out. I'm really looking forward to it. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in game very soon. Oh